What's good everybody, my name is Mateo Toro. I'm a filmmaker, video editor, photographer, colorist. Literally my life is just spent behind the screen. So I wanted to make this video to just talk about if it's actually worth investing into the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch that came out in late 2020, especially if you're gonna be behind the screen editing and just using this as a powerhouse laptop to run your business. I'm gonna go over my use case scenario on how I need my laptop on a daily basis as a video editor to run my video production business. Before I do so, let me mention the MacBook Pro that I had before I invested into M1. MacBook Pro 13 inch, which was a mid 2019 15 inch, eight core i9 with 32, 32 gigabytes of RAM. At the time, I spent a pretty penny, almost $4,000, and it was a powerhouse machine when I first purchased it. A month later, however, Apple disappointed me because they announced a 16 inch MacBook Pro. So I almost had a Mac style 16 inch MacBook Pro, it just was the older laptop. I run a video production business, so I'm editing four to five times a week. I'm exporting multiple drafts on a given day. The work that I produce is run just from commercials to mini docs and music videos. And I'm sometimes just taking on really big projects with very intensive timelines as the video editor. Needless to say, my perspective is coming from someone who has to use their MacBook Pro every single day as a professional. And I need something reliable and that can handle any project that I throw at it. That was my 15 inch MacBook Pro for the last year and a half. However, last year I upgraded to the Sony A7S III and the codecs that I'm filming in, which is 4K XAVCS 422 10-bit, they are very compressed. And my 15 inch MacBook Pro was really starting to slow down. It really couldn't handle those files unless I created proxies. And when you create proxies, it takes time out of your workflow. So now you have to wait till Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve um, creates all those proxies. And then I was really seeing the limit of the 15 inch MacBook Pro because when I would export these timelines with this um, footage, it just really, really was slowing down compared to when I was using my old APS-C Sony with only eight bit files. I don't mind creating proxies. It's something that's part of the workflow. You know, it's something that you just kind of have to get used to. However, it does slow down your workflow. And not only that, but it also eats up your storage. So now the SSD that you might be using has to use up more of the space to just be able to create the proxies. And that might limit you on how big the project can be on a particular SSD or hard drive. Let me show you how the Venture Resolve 17 on the MacBook Pro M1 scrubs through this footage without any proxies. Again, this footage is from the A7S III with the compressed codex. It's not lagging. It's literally just playing it frame by frame. I'm able to see my image in the best possible quality. And this is really important to me when I'm color grading because I want to see what my image is looking like. I'm really, really playing around and pushing the image as far as I can. Um, you can't beat this. <laughs> uh, my last MacBook Pro would be literally fuming. The, the noise fan levels would be out of this world. Um, and I would not even be able to even do this without turning proxies on. I'm gonna show you a real world example of me exporting a brand video that I shot for my friends at DN Organics, filmed entirely on my Sony A7S III, the same codec that I mentioned. This timeline on Final Cut Pro has, you know, a mix of 24 frames, 60 frames, slow motion, really compressed <laughs> video files and just like four layers of color grading. You're gonna see the difference in performance and exporting time between the MacBook Pro 13 inch and my old 15 inch MacBook Pro. Okay, on the right side, I have my M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch with 16 gigabytes of RAM. And on the left side, I have my 15 inch i9 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And my M1 MacBook Pro with the upgrade to the SSD and the upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of RAM cost me about $1,800 after taxes. And my 15 inch i9 MacBook Pro from 2019 um, cost me about $4,000 after taxes to get that 32 gigabytes of RAM. And I think I upgraded the, the core as well. And you're gonna see that this is really pretty much an unfair comparison. The M1 MacBook Pro just completely obliterates the export time compared to the Intel 15 inch i9 MacBook Pro. So let's speed up. Basically the M1 MacBook Pro exported this video in about five minutes and 10 seconds. The 2019 15-inch i9 MacBook Pro with 32 gigabytes of RAM took roughly about 20 minutes and 25 seconds. My M1 MacBook Pro 13-inch obliterated my 2019 i9 MacBook Pro. It exported that video in about five minutes, 11 seconds, and the 2019 exported that video in about 20 minutes and 25 seconds. So the difference was about four times faster in export speed. And that has been across the board in most of my projects on Final Cut Pro, as well as on DaVinci Resolve. I think if DaVinci Resolve was actually giving me faster performances, 
And the great thing that I love so far about the M1 chip with DaVinci Resolve is that DaVinci Resolve loads up so much faster. If you ever use DaVinci Resolve, you know that load up screen takes a long time for you, you to even be able to see the projects that you're working on. And then also the fan, the fan does not turn on when I'm exporting. Like I threw this intensive timeline full of this highly compressed codex, full of slow motion footage that is really, really, really hard on the M1, on the 15 inch MacBook Pro. So you can really see the, the difference in performance. So the amount of time it takes me to export four drives to let's say a client in a given day would only allow me to export one draft on the same amount of time to a client using my 2019 MacBook Pro. So that's a huge difference in performance, huge difference to my workflow. I'm able to get out the office much faster than I need to be. I don't wanna be inside in front of a desk all day. I wanna be out there creating. So M1 MacBook Pro has been the best investment I've made this year. In conclusion, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch late 2020 edition is just a game changer. It's really unbelievable how much of a performance upgrade Apple was able to throw into this M1 chip. If you're a video editor, you're gonna see a giant upgrade in your workflow. Uh, what it takes to export one video on the old Intel laptops, you can probably do three or four <laughs> uh, renders to show your clients some drafts. So it's just really a huge, huge upgrade in my workflow. I'm saving so much time being able to export much faster, export multiple drafts, being able to play back this Sony A7S III codex without using proxies if I don't need to and I just want to make a quick edit for maybe some short content. Uh, you're gonna see just a giant upgrade in your workflow, just saving so much time. For the last few months that I've had this, I've never seen the beach ball on Final Cut Pro. DaVinci Resolve is running so smooth since it's optimized with the M1 chip. So I'm seeing almost the exact same performance on Final Cut Pro as I am on DaVinci Resolve, especially when you're exporting and you have those intensive color grades on DaVinci Resolve. The fan never turns on, it's a silent machine. It's just sitting here docked up, open all the time, and I've never heard the fan turn on. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was insightful and it helped you decision and whether you want to upgrade to the M1 MacBook Pro 13 inch or not. Leave a like on the video, hit that thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And let me know in the comment section below, are you a Final Cut user, DaVinci user? Have you upgraded to the M1 MacBook Pro? I would love to hear your workflows and how you're using these machines. And stay tuned for the next video. I'll see you everyone in the next one. Peace.